Now, as everybody knows, Lincoln was born in a log cabin in Kentucky, it's true. His family moved when he was very young across the Ohio River into Indiana, southern Indiana, which was a free state, but that area was settled mostly by southerners or people from the Upper South, like Lincoln's own family. Um, there, were very, there was no slaves there, there were very few black people. Lincoln had little contact with blacks for the early part of his life. Uh, as when he got to be 21, he moved to Illinois, and, uh, and really his vocation, or his, he made a living eventually as a lawyer, but his real vocation was politics. Lincoln was a politician. That's the first thing. I don't say that, the trouble is, you say that nowadays, and, um, well, let me just, you know, politicians have like the lowest, uh, are held in the lowest esteem of almost any group in American society today. Uh, if, you know, so, but Lincoln was a politician, Lincoln loved politics, um, and this was a time when politicians were really these kind of national heroes. Lincoln loved Henry Clay, his, his idol, as he said many, many times. I mentioned Clay, of course. Um, and um, Lincoln was also a man who both experienced and embraced the market revolution. Illinois went through this market revolution during his lifetime, during the first part of his lifetime. He starts out in the frontier, subsistence farming, flatboat on a river. By the 1850s, the railroads are there, the steamboats have been there for a long time, commercial farming has taken over, all sorts of goods from all over the world are available in stores in Illinois, even in small towns. Uh, the market has taken over economic life there. Lincoln embraces this. Lincoln, some Americans were fearful or felt that this uh, produced inequality. Lincoln said, no, this is the way to get ahead. And that's why he joined the Whig Party, which was, as I've said, believed in economic growth, economic diversification promoted by the uh, government, state government, federal government, a national banking system, a tariff, federal or state money for internal improvements, for river and harbor improvements and things like that. Um, and, um, you know, that was what Lincoln was interested in in the first part of his career, the Whig economic program. Um, now, the problem with being a Whig in Illinois was they always lost. They always lost, which, is, which makes you think that maybe political ambition wasn't the only motive for Lincoln. If you really wanted to get ahead in Illinois, you became a Democrat. The Whigs never elected a governor. They never elected a senator. They very rarely had a majority in either house of the Illinois legislature. Uh, Lincoln joined the Whigs because he obviously wanted to get ahead, but he believed in this Whig doctrine of economic development promoted and funded by uh, the public authority. Um, in the first part of his career, he didn't really say very much about slavery. The only moment really where he took a stand, and actually a fairly courageous one, was in 1837 in when the legislature, and at that time the legislature was composed almost entirely of people born in the South, people from Kentucky, people from Virginia. The real northern migration into Illinois doesn't take place till the 1840s and 50s. Illinois is first settled from the South upwards. And at that time the legislature passed a resolution condemning the abolitionists for stirring up trouble and affirming the right of Southerners to own slaves, and also opposing the abolition of slavery in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, which the abolitionists were uh, campaigning for. Lincoln voted, was one of only four, I think, people in the whole legislature who voted against this resolution. I mean, it passed, if you add up the two houses, I don't know, it was 80, 90 to one, or no, to three or four, or whatever. Um, hardly anyone voted against it, and then Lincoln wrote a little statement to put in the legislative uh, uh, record explaining what they call a protest, just explaining his vote. He couldn't even get any of the other guys who'd voted with him to sign this. The only other one, it was, you needed two people to sign it to get it in there, and he finally convinced another legislator, Dan Stone, who was not running for re-election. He had been appointed a judge. So Lincoln and Stone put forward this little explanation of why they voted against this resolution denouncing the abolitionists, and they say they believe that the institution of slavery is founded on both injustice and bad policy.
but that the promulgation of abolition doctrines tends rather to increase rather than abate its evil. Now that little sentence actually sums up for a long time Lincoln's views. Slavery is based on injustice, that's the moral view, and bad policy, that's the economic or political view. But I'm not an abolitionist. In fact, the abolitionist agitation causes more problems than it uh, is worth. So he's, a, he's working within the political system. He's a moderate. He's not. But still, in Illinois in 1837, it took some political courage to put a statement like that. There was no abolitionist movement in Illinois at that time, hardly anything. So it wasn't like he was appealing to any voters by signing this, uh, putting forward this. Anyway, after leaving the legislature in the early 1840s, Lincoln remains a very active member of the Whig Party. In fact, uh, a guy I know, uh, Matt Pink Pinsker, uh, from David's, uh, no, Dickinson College, right, in Pennsylvania, is writing a book right now with the somewhat unfamiliar title, Boss Lincoln, about Lincoln as a political boss, as a political organizer. He was a very shrewd student of politics, and he was always, in fact, the first time he ever used the phrase, the house divided, was not in that great speech of 1858, but in the 1840s when he was writing something about the Whig Party, the need for party unity. A house divided cannot stand. In other words, the party has to stop factionalism, has to get together, otherwise it'll never win any elections. Well, Lincoln served one term in Congress. There was only one district in Illinois that elected Whigs to Congress, and that was central Illinois where he was there. He served one term from 18... Uh, 46, there was elected 40, 47 to 49. Um, he was extremely unpopular because he strongly opposed the Mexican War, which was very popular in Illinois. In fact, Illinois sent more soldiers to fight in Mexico than any other state in the Union. Lincoln's opposition to the Mexican War was unpopular, and indeed, he, was, he didn't even run for re-election. And the man who ran for, as the Whig for his seat was defeated, and some people blamed Lincoln's unpopularity for the defeat of the next Whig candidate. Then he'd lost, and like many, but the Whigs won the presidential election in, in 1848 with Zachary Taylor. So Lincoln thought, like many failed congressmen, he would get a um, political appointment. And he lobbied to get an appointment in what they call the land office, but it went to someone else. Taylor eventually offered him the governorship of the territorial governorship of Oregon. Lincoln said, forget that. I'm not going back to the frontier. Lincoln grew up on the frontier, but as soon as he could, he got out of it. He, went to, he lived in cities as an adult. Springfield it was a small city. He did not want to go back to the, to the backwoods. And I'm sure his wife, who, uh, Mary, who was a very cultured, and highly educated and talented woman, not at all like you see in the movies, um, was, uh, didn't want to go out to Oregon. Nothing against Oregon, I don't know if there's any here, but it was a little off the beaten path at that time. So uh, he didn't, so, he end, so his political career is over, basically. 1849-50, Lincoln's career is over, and he devotes himself to his law practice. But as for many other people, the Kansas-Nebraska Act and the political shakeup that follows reopens the possibility of a political career for a guy like Lincoln. His career had been stopped, you know, reached an impasse. Now suddenly there's a new politics. The old issues are no longer out there. The tariff, the bank. Now it's slavery, the expansion of slavery. And Lincoln very quickly emerges as the leading spokesman in Illinois for those opposed to the Kansas-Nebraska Act and opposed to the westward expansion of slavery. He doesn't really join the Republican Party until late 1855. There really is no Republican Party in Illinois for a while. 